All right. Now let us uh have a, have a look at an illustrative example of base risk. So our question is that how can a doctor use this kind of concept to make an optimal decision? So, uh, so for example, so as we dis as we used before, this example is that, uh, the cancer patient is the twenty percent of total population of the patients, and the non-cancer disease patient is eighty percent of the total population of patients. Uh, now there are two actions that we can take. So the first action is chemotherapy, and then the other, the second action is the medication. So we form this the loss matrix. All right. Uh, so the costs are defined slightly different from the previous case. Uh, for just for the il illustration. Uh, so from this uh population information, we get that we get the priors. So the priors for the class one priors for the class two. And then this the all the lambdas from the loss matrix. So first, uh, we can ask, uh, what will be the optimal action that will minimize the expected risk? So what will be the best treatment that will minimize the the total risk? So in discussing in reviewing the Bayesian classifier, uh. We said that uh, without any observation, what we can do best is to use the initial belief, which is with priors. Now here is the same that we just have the defined cost uh, for each case. So we can uh, compute the expected risk when choosing action one for both classes with these priors. Uh, so. So we choose the action one for the class one, and then we choose the action one for the class two. So the total risk for choosing the action one will be the the ten here, and then total expected risk when choosing the action two will be the same way we calculate, and then it will be four. So from this. Uh, by comparing these two expected risks, we can say that, uh, in general, uh, it is riskier to uh, treat the patient with the chemotherapy for both patients. If we don't know, like, the patient is which patient. So for all patients, treating them with the medication is less riskier. It's more optimal decision from this setting. So... But we can think that um, for cancer patients, the treatment can be different from non-cancer disease patients. So if we can know which patient is cancer patient, then we can treat them separately from non-cancer patients for a more effective treatment. So in order to do this, we need to take some observations that may be helpful for classifying the patients first. And then we choose an optimal, optimal action for each group of patients that maybe risky less riskier as an effective treatment. So as we did before for the Bayesian classifier, so what we can do here is that we can uh take some observations. So give them some tests uh, uh and then we observe the test results. So and then we analyze the results. So the set test is given for known already classified patients and then we analyze the results so f the the test the possible candidates for the test will be maybe mri or x-ray taking an x-ray or blood test and so on so here we cho choose the, to uh, take the blood test as an observation so we first uh, got the test samples from the known classified patients and we found out that for the negative blood test result, the uh, the cancer patient showed the ninety percent, and then uh, non cancer disease patient showed ten percent of negative blood test, and for the positive blood test, uh, the non cancer disease uh, patient showed the ninety percent, and then the cancer disease. Uh, patient showed the ten percent of positive blood test. So from this, uh, we can uh, find the probabilities that we will use in the 
decision uh, process. So first we will uh, put the negative into the x1 and then the, let the positive be the x2. So we can find all these conditional probabilities from this uh, analysis. So it will be like this. So now, uh, what will be the optimal treatment for each patient? So we can use this information uh, to, to find out the optimal treatment. All right. So now we have given the observation X for each patient. And the observation will be the blood test result, which uh, either negative or the positive. So for each X, uh, for each observation blood test result, we will choose an action, alpha I, that minimizes the conditional risk. All right. So we will find the optimal action. So now we have uh, all these priors and all these the, the, the cost and risk uh, defined from the loss matrix and this, uh, the conditional probabilities from the analysis. Uh, so now, what is the optimal action and the base risk? Uh, so, for each x, we will find the action that minimizes conditional risk. Uh, so, we are using the equation that we uh, discussed before. So, this is the conditional risk. So, let's find out the conditional risk for choosing action i for x. So this, because this is a posterior, we can uh, uh, translate this posterior into this equation. And we first need to find this p of x. And this will be, as we said before, it will be the collected observation about the x from each class. So for each, for x1, probability of x1 is collected uh, observation from the class one and then the class two. So we use this all this uh, the result from the analysis to compute this probability of x one. So the probability of the x one meaning the negative uh, blood test result among all the patients will be the twenty six percent of all the patients. And uh, and because this is complementary. Uh, to the the other case, so the the other case, which is the X two positive blood test result, uh, population of the positive test result patient will be seventy four percent. All right. So now we have this uh, information in addition uh, to what we had before. All right. So now mm, we will compute the conditional risk using all this. So, first of all, uh, the because of this the cost or risk for a correct uh, the, the these uh, cases are zero. These cases are zero, so it's uh, removed, and then we'll compute for only this case. So, and then this uh, we use the the Bayesian rule, and uh, because we have the p of x one, so the it will be computed the the conditional risk of uh, choosing action 1 for x for the blood test result x1 negative uh, blood test will be 3 and uh, so the same for the action 2 we do the same uh, computation using all these values and then we'll get the conditional risk 13.85 uh, so now so from comparing these two so we found out that uh, taking the action 1 for the blood test result x, x1 is less riskier than the taking action 2. So we can say that for x1, the take, taking action 1 is an optimal decision. And we can do the same thing for the blood test result x2. So and so for the x2, if we take the x, action 1, 
that we will get the conditional risk 19.73 and then for the if we take the action 2 for the x2 blood test x result x2 then we will get uh, the risk 0.54 so by comparing these two we also get uh, the information that uh, taking the action 1 uh, for the blood test result x2 is much riskier uh, so it means that uh, for this uh, blood test result x2 taking the action 2 is an optimal decision so the base risk uh, will be found by uh, choosing the optimal action for each x that will minimize uh, the total risk so here uh, for the x1 we chose the action 1 because it's an optimal action that we found that here and then uh, that for the x2 we take the action 2 now we found out that this is the total risk is uh, 1.2 so this is the base risk for this example now let's compare this uh, risk with the risk that we uh, computed before we used the observation result all right so when doctor always gave uh, the action 2 which is the medication the total risk was 4 and when the doctor gives always the chemotherapy for both patients uh, then the total risk was 8 so in the previous discussion we said that uh, giving the medication was less less riskier than giving the chemotherapy uh, without knowing uh, which patient is which now by using this uh, uh, the observation we uh, we can minim even further minimize the risk by finding the optimal action for each observation uh, result so we can uh, find out that the base risk is indeed the minimum total risk. Uh, all right. So it it makes sense now that uh, when we have when we take the blood test for each patient, so when the blood test result is negative, we we'll, uh, take the chemotherapy, and uh, when the blood test is the positive, we will give the medication to the patient, and this will be the optimal action. All right. Uh, so this is it for my lecture about the risk and cost minimization and these are the references that uh, I studied from about this risk and cost minimization and thanks for watching this lecture.